Let's take a look at foreshortening leaves and petals. A lot of this you already know, it's intuitive, but there's a couple of details that are worth taking a closer look at. In order to do this, downloading, printing out, cutting out, the leaf model that's included with these videos will help you tremendously. Do that now before continuing on. I'm going to use this larger teacher version to help describe what we're seeing, but it's going to make a tremendous difference for you to be able to watch what we're doing on the model that's in your hand. Again, taking that leaf model, placing it on a flat book so that it's not curling and twisting is going to help you see what we're looking at. A little bit later on we'll deal with leaves and petals that are curling and where you can see both sides of them. For now we want to keep it really flat. The first thing which we want to notice is that if you take your leaf model, put it on a flat surface, hold it at eye level, close one eye, just as we were doing with the flower model, we're going to tilt it away from us. But this time we're going to look at not just what happens to the overall shape, its height and its width, but also how sharp the tip of the leaf is. So hold it so that the leaf is pointing tip up and tilt it away from you and notice what you see. Rock your leaf back and forth a few times. As you rock a leaf away from you, in addition to it getting overall shorter, the sharpness of the tip is going to change. So on a leaf that is at a foreshortened angle, the leaf tip is going to appear blunt. When that leaf is shown at full face-on view, you'll see the actual uh, sharpness of that point. But as you tilt that back, it's going to become blunt. How does that look in a diagram? If I have a very simplified leaf model here, that's its tip. I've just taken the top third of it and made that into a tip. If I were to squish this down, foreshorten it, all right, and I know that as if I'm moving uh, the far side away from me, the back side will appear shorter. I'm not going to really emphasize that in that picture. I really want to just, for now, focus on what happens with these other changes in height and width. If I take the last third of this and make that into a point again, you can see that the leaf becomes less pointed as it's foreshortened. Similarly, if there are veins coming in at a diagonal angle on this, those veins are going to change in two ways. First note that the angle of the vein changes from this to this. So the, these veins are at a steeper angle here. And also, look at the spacing between these veins. This distance here. Here, they're very close together. Here, they're appearing much further apart. Now take a look at your leaf model. Look carefully at the veins, and you'll see as the leaf tilts away from you, the veins go from being up at an angle to getting flatter and flatter and flatter. Um, so it's not what you'd expect. You don't expect the leaf vein angle to change or the sharpness of the tip to change. But take a close look at your leaf model and notice how those things actually do change as you're tilting it back in space. Those are the changes I see if a leaf is 
tilting away from me, if that same leaf rotates on the vertical axis instead of on the horizontal axis, I see a different set of changes. The leaf becomes narrower and sharper tipped, and with that, the angle of the veins will change as well. If my same leaf here I will see that the tip of it becomes sharper those veins again appear closer together and the angle of the veins will be even steeper these same sorts of changes you would see on a petal that has lines, nectar guides on it, as you would see on a, on a leaf. Be aware of how those angles on, and uh, the acuity of the point of petals and leaves change as you're drawing leaves at different angles and views.